And so while there is sorrow and repentance over sin, there is also joy when we look to the cross and we see it on Christ because he has taken it from us. What's up, YouTube? Ryan here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where on every episode, I'm always contending for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. And today, well, Lent is coming. <laughs> Right, Lent is coming right around the corner. Ash Wednesday, beginning the season of Lent this year, 2021, February 17th. There it is. And so we need to talk about, should we give up something for Lent? Or should we do something for Lent? What is Lent about? And I've got a couple of suggestions. So if you're new to the channel, if you like this kind of solid biblical Christian theological content, Hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell to stay up to date. You can always find me on facebook.com slash 1517films. And I love reading and responding to your comments in the comment section below. So make that a part of our everyday life together. So Lent is coming up. Now, it's that magical time of year, Lent is coming up, where there's a certain group of people that shall remain nameless that will say things like, Well, oh, I'm giving up Lent for Lent. Lent is a vain tradition of men, and I'm giving up the vain traditions of men for Lent. Right? They, they almost, in an ironic twist of fate, they almost seem like the Pharisee with arms outstretched, praying, thank you God that I am not like other men, especially this poor sinner over here. When I hear I'm giving up Lent for Lent, that's what I hear. I hear the Pharisee's prayer. So, should we give something up for Lent, though? Should we, you know, um, Lent, 40 days of fasting, of prayer, of repentance, of literally ashes on your forehead, if you should so choose, on Ash Wednesday. Although, it's not a law, it's not a requirement. But should we do things for Lent, or should we give up things for Lent? And if we do, do we talk about them? The most important thing that I think we can understand about the season of Lent is that it's not about us. I know we're going to think a lot about ourselves, aren't we? I'm doing this for Lent, or I'm giving this up for Lent, or I'm so hungry, or I'm so, I have such a caffeine headache, or, or whatever it is. We're going to focus on ourselves. That's our, 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 our human nature, our sinful condition that, that causes us to do that. Lent isn't about us. Lent is about Jesus for us. And so when we think on our sin, which we should do in the season of Lent, when we think about our wretchedness, we don't look for it on ourselves. We look at our sin where it has last been placed onto Christ himself. We don't look in the mirror at ourselves with our downturned faces and and, and looking so solemn and glum because I can't have chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream or I can't eat meat on Fridays. We, no, we look to Christ and we see on the cross our sin. He makes our sin his own and he bears the condemnation for it and he takes it into the grave and he rises again from the dead, victorious over our sin, victorious over death and victorious even over the devil himself. And this is Lent. This is why you will hear many a Lutheran say with repentant joy. That is the theme of Lent, repentant joy. Sure, there is sincere, heartfelt sorrow for sin. And there is absolute repentance and pleading to, before God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. But we understand the answer to that prayer when we look not to ourselves and our own sacrifices that we might make during Lent. We look to the cross where Jesus has had mercy on us by taking our sin into his own flesh, bearing its condemnation in his flesh, and burying it in his tomb. And so, well, under the guidance of, of Scripture itself, the words of Christ himself, when he says, when you fast, not if, 
we understand, and we begin the season of Lent looking at his 40 days of fasting, recalling the 40 years in the wilderness. And we see all of Israel reduced to one man, Christ, who from his baptism where he is baptized into our sin, he goes to temptation to do what Adam and Eve could not, to defeat the devil in temptation. He goes into his ministry to pro- proclaim the gospel, to have mercy on sinners and lepers, and, and he always goes with our sins to the cross. That is who the Christ is. That is how God has mercy on us when we say, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. And then, having been baptized into our sins, bearing them through temptation to the cross and enduring the wrath of God, what does the word of God tell us? Do you not know that those of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism. So Lent starts with baptism and brings us to baptism, which is why, as far as Lenten devotions go, as far as fasting or anything like that, I'm not going to say one way or the other if I am or what it would be even if I did. But as far as Lenten devotions, I have picked up into his death and resurrection Lenten devotions on holy baptism put out by the good people at Steadfast Lutherans. Very inexpensive book. Quick little devotions for every day. Ooh, can you see that in the light? For every day of the season of Lent all the way to Easter Sunday. But there's plenty of other Lenten devotions. I would take a look at Concordia Publishing House, cph.org. See what you can find there. And one of the best recommendations that cph.org makes is to spend 40 days reading uh the Lutheran Confessions. Now, you don't have to be Lutheran to read the Lutheran Confessions. You can be any denomination, and this is an important document for you as a Christian. It explains both sides of what was happening. Well, I would say all three sides of what was happening during the Reformation in the 1500s. What Rome was doing in those days what Luther stood for and against based on scripture alone, and what the radical reformers who would come to found mainline American Protestantism and Protestantism globally, what they had to say. And so you see Luther in the middle standing on the scriptures saying to Rome, keep this, this is biblical, we should stop doing that, that's not biblical. And looking at the the uh, pa- uh, the Anabaptists and, and the and all of the other radical reformers are going, stop throwing the baby out with the bathwater. So cph.org has an incredible link. It's from 2016, so the dates are going to be off. An incredible link to read the Lutheran Confessions through the 40 days of Lent. And this is incredible because as, as we all come to find out when we read these confessions, they teach Christ and him crucified for us and for the forgiveness of our sins. So maybe the thing that we can give up during Lent is our time. Doesn't have to be money. Doesn't have to be food. But we can give up of our time and we can study our Christian faith. And maybe, just maybe, if you have some concerns in this day and age and the newness of 2021 that we as Christians might be facing some persecution as opposed to the moderate inconvenience we've been facing, then I would highly recommend reading the Lutheran Confessions. It is high time that we as Christians stand on what we believe and we know what we believe, what we teach, and what we confess. And if you're looking for an excuse to get into it, Lent is a perfect time to sacrifice your time to be certainly God's word, absolutely, first and foremost, every Christian, especially during the season of Lent, should have their Bibles completely open. That's where we need to go. But if we're looking for a little, that little extra during Lent, something else to do or to sacrifice as we focus in on repentance and we look at our sin on Christ in our place with repentant joy, we take a little extra time And we learn what it is that we believe, what Christians have always believed. That's another perk to reading the Lutheran Confessions on a 40-day reading plan. You're going to see 
what Christians throughout two millennia have had to say about certain doctrinal topics. And it makes it painstakingly obvious what historic biblical Christianity actually is. And you can start to identify, as was the case with me when I was a Protestant, reading through the Lutheran confessions, reading through the arguments against this, that, or the other heresy, going, oh, well, I go to a non-denominational church that preaches that heresy, but it is clearly laid out here from the scriptures and from the writings of the earliest Christians. That's, in fact, heresy. Things like baptism as an act of obedience, or communion is just a symbol, or making a decision for the Lord, or worship being something that we do or we have to experience here. And these little hairs that stand up on our arm. All of this. It, these Lutheran confessions will point you nowhere else except for to the cross, which is where we're supposed to be looking during the season of Lent anyways. So, Lent is coming. Lent is coming. And we should weigh heavily and seriously this opportunity that we have as Christians to look at our sin, not on ourselves, but on our Savior, and with repentant joy, Walk with him through a season of 40 days of prayer, of fasting, of repentance to the joy of the resurrection, knowing that our sin has been buried and he has risen victorious over sin, death, and the devil. And then we don't go to the cross for salvation. That is where it was won, certainly. But we go where Christ invites us to go, the places where he gives to us the fruits of the cross. So we go to our baptism, not being baptized again, but making the sign of the Holy Cross in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, recalling our baptisms, where God put his name on us, and where the sin that Christ bore, where we also are buried with him by that baptism into his death. And we look to the resurrection on Easter Sunday, where we know in our baptism, we too were raised with him to newness of life. And so while there is sorrow and repentance over sin, there is also joy when we look to the cross and we see it on Christ because he has taken it from us. And we know that when we stand before God on judgment day, we, we have nothing that we can or could plead but he will plead his precious blood for us. And maybe if we're not Christian, what are we going to do then when we face judgment day? Are we going to go and plead our own good works? Good works of those who are not saved? Well, they're like a note with no gold to back it. Sure, you can build up this pile of, 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 of bills and notes and you can present it, but it's empty and hollow because it lacks the gold to back it. But, the Christian, the Christian, their good works, which they will not plead before God, they cannot plead before God. They plead nothing, and all of the gold that could ever back their good works is then credited to them as righteousness by Christ himself because it is his worth, his worthiness, and his merit which has done it. So we've got a week to think about Lent and to prepare our hearts and our minds to be receptive to God's word, to choose whether or not we are, we are going to deny our bodies. And certainly we should deny some time to be in that word of God. Pick up a tiny little devotional to help you be in the word of God. I'm not saying sit there and read the whole Bible for 40 days, although lots of people do that. But if you do want to read something big for 40 days, and I will put a link in the description below, this is what I would recommend. I'm going to do it. Not because it's Lent, but because it's a, it's a good thing to do. So I'll put the link in the description below to the reading plan for the Lutheran Confessions. I'll put a link in the description below to this beautiful little book, Into His Death and Resurrection, Lenten Devotions on Holy Baptism. And of course, I'll just put the link to CPH in general, where you can find all sorts of other Lenten devotionals to bring you to God's Word. Where during the season of sorrow for sin and repentance, you will not look to yourself and your own acts of righteousness during the season of Lent as you're giving something up, you will look instead to your sin on Christ where he bears it in your place. And now for you, there is no condemnation because you 
are in Jesus Christ. Until next time, may God richly bless you and the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.